And what about you? And in the garage today is a Ford Focus Mark III. And uh, it's in here because it has failed its MOT. Right, so let us see what we have here. Okay, what are they not happy with? Headlamp incorrect alignment, headlamp leveling device, inoperative, offside front, broken rod, brake system, ABS, EBS, warning light, not following correct sequence on dash, and electronic stability control, warning lamp indicating the fault on dash. So it's ABS lights and ESP lights are on, indicating an ABS fault. So let's have a look here. What have we got? 83,000 miles. Previous reading 72. Ford Focus Titanium TDCA. 1560cc 2013 model year. And uh, what's that? Headlamp aim near side. Too high. Offside. Too low. And uh, there's a wee bit here on brake forces. If you're interested. Those are okay of course. So 6% imbalance in axle 1, 2% axle 2, which is very good indeed. 18% on the parking brake. Uh, yeah, I think the tolerance is 20%, I think. Can't remember, but uh, yeah, all those are good anyway. Okay, so where are we here? Broken rod. Let's have a wee look. So... Without even taking the wheel off, we can see in here. Let's get you in here. All right. So we have a headlamp level sensor there. And it's like a, you know, potentiometer thing. Goes up and down with suspension. Connected there to there. And that is broken in a really bad spot. Hmm. So, I think all we're going to do about that is a replacement unit. So, this thing comes with brackets and the sensor and, you know, all what you see there. Even that bracket there that goes on to the lower wishbone. And from Ford, that there is about 260 quid to buy. And, uh, well, we'll have a look at the second half market for that one, I think. So we did a quick scan, as Sandy would say. Let's see what we've got. Uh, ABS, invalid data, ABS, left rear wheel speed sensor. Uh, what's that? Left hand corner lump circuit. Invalid data from ABS. Something to do with semi automatic parallel parking system. And uh, invalid data from ABS. So, yeah. Left rear wheel speed sensor. Mm -hmm. So that's our boy. So we record a wee bit of late data here and uh, the, the wheel speeds before we put the corner up. So we'll just have a wee look. So we're scooting along there nicely. Left rear wheel speed sensor input. Nothing. Teddy bread. Duck egg. Zero. Zip. Note. So I'm connected in there with breakout leads and uh, this here sensor. However, this is a no one good. So th this is the, the right rear. So according to our live data, this one works okay. So what we're going to do, just basically for the purposes of the video here more than anything, is see what tests we can do on this type of sensor. So I reckon this is a whole sensor. But uh, we'll do a few tests here and see what the crack is. Ignition on and see what we've got. So, what's that? 12.85 volts. Okay, so I have a battery maintainer on this. 
and that is keeping the battery in the car at 13.5 volts so I have this thing here connected to the battery and uh, 13.53 volts at the battery but we're getting 12.85 so if you didn't have a battery maintainer on you know you maybe see about 11 volts there or something like that you know you'll always get a wee bit less than what the battery voltage is sitting at so that's that's normal that's 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 fine happy enough for that so we'll give her a wee bit of a spin here and what do we see well basically nothing so that doesn't really tell us much slight fluctuation there but nothing worth talking about so what we can do and you can do this with uh, you know any voltmeter so this will be a hall effect sensor on this and uh, what i think it is anyway what i suspect it to be so what we'll do is right on and we'll put it on volts ac rms and we'll put it on. let's see what we've got 10 millivolts nine millivolts thereabouts all right then so what that's doing is when we put it on ac so it's taken out that 12.8 volts so that constant sort of voltage there it's removed so all it's going to see is any wee fluctuations you know so let's give her a spin and there we get a bit of a change so that's what we're looking for we're looking for a bit of a change and the faster we go let's see what we get So we'll just move it across the, the segments in the magnetic ring, which will be part of this wheel bearing here. You know, we can see that change. So what I can also do, why I have this uh, power probe 4 out, there's a, there's a frequency counter on this, so it's basically measuring the pulse width. Now this, you know, if you put a normal meter on this, on frequency, uh, it probably won't work. But this thing, it's measuring the pulse width, so... We can actually see it on this as well, this power probe forward. Right, so we're on our left side now, which is the, the one that the car is complaining about. So we'll test this to see if we get the same, same results. Ignition on. So, we have battery voltage, or, well, less, slightly less than battery voltage. So, a wee thing that's worthwhile considering here is if you have a fault on an ABS sensor, or you suspect an ABS sensor, some cars, some cars turn the circuit off. So, if you did that test there and you saw nothing, uh, you might have to delete the codes and start again, you know. And if you disconnect it to put your wires in or whatever, it may turn the circuit off. So it's worthwhile noting on this car, I've noticed that it isn't doing that. So, you know, you can have uh, been able to disconnect these and what have you, and it doesn't make an ounce of difference. So we know that spinning this wheel won't make any difference to that voltage output. So what we'll do is uh, we'll put it on the AC RMS. Uh, what have I got? 10, 11 millivolts. I'm going to spin the wheel. Well, nothing really worth talking about. Let's see now. Night. So at the minute, from what we've done, I kind of suspect that we just need a sensor for this thing. So what I've done is 
I've taken these breakout wires out. They're just hanging in the air. So that sensor in there isn't connected to anything. So this is the left. So this is a, the dodgy one, you know. So what we've done, just to prove that the ABS module is receiving a signal and it's happy enough and all that, we have a known good over here on the rear right. So we've patched the two of them together. So we're using the sensor and the rotor ring and all that there from the right hand wheel and we'll just check then on the live data are we able to get the signal down the left to the ABS. So even though we're spinning the rear right, we're looking for a signal on the rear left, second one down there. So we'll give us a wee bit of a, a bird there. And, yeah, that's dead on. So, we just need a sensor in that. So, fortunately on these, we'll get that out of the road there. Fortunately on these, you can, you can change this sensor. There's a wee T25 Torx. You'd, normally on, on most cars, you would have to change that bearing, you know. And, uh, well, we'll get this out. See what the crack is, you know. Let me see if I can see it. Shouldn't be out tight. There may be a bit of thread lock or something on it. So that's coming all right. Come on, baby. It's tight to get It's tight to get out even just to disconnect the plugs in these things. You know? Yeah, that's it, right? I think. There we go. And, uh, well, it's just a plastic housing, so it should just pop out. And it does. Great job. And do you think we could maybe get a look inside this uh, rocker ring while we're at it? May as well. So we've got that sensor fitted there and we'll check it towards the end of the video. We'll spin the wheel in the car and look at the live data and all that jazz. So a bit of an explanation, you know, that testing I'm doing with a voltmeter on AC, it's just a quick, dirty test. You see a lot of guys on the YouTube there and they're putting oscilloscopes on it. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're saying, you know, a square wave and all that sort of jazz. And they're saying, yeah, there we go, digital signal, Hall effect, and that's it. Now I'm saying that I think this is a Hall effect because I just saw it, happened to see it mentioned in service data that that was actually a Hall effect. But what is more prevalent nowadays in cars are magneto-resistive sensors. And uh, visually, you know, they look identical. You can't really tell the difference. So the, the old style sensor, the variable reluctance sensor, which is a passive sensor, you could indeed resistance check those because you're just resistance checking a big coil around a permanent magnet. And you can tell uh, what they look like. I mean, this, is a, this is a crank sensor, but they're, you know, they're basically a big, a big fat thing like that, you know? So visually uh, they're, they're quite different, whereas uh, these ones here are small. So a brief overview of uh, 
what Hall Effect actually is. And uh, I've written down a couple of wee drawings here. So anyway, if you put a magnet on usually a semiconductor, the electrons are negatively charged and actually flow from negative to positive. So that's the opposite of conventional current. So on your uh, clamp meters and stuff like that, you'll see this here, arrow, you know. Normally that is conventional current going from uh, plus to minus. So let's see, I'll, it'll be on that. So there's a, there's a plus there and a minus. That is conventional current. So that is going from positive to negative. But electrons are negatively charged, so they're attracted to the positive. The negative goes to the positive. So the current flow is actually in that direction. Anywho, without, for, without uh, going into that too much, if you put a magnet towards that, it deviates those electrons. So the electrons are attracted towards the, the magnet. So those electrons bend, you know. And what that leaves in this side are holes then in the semiconductor, what are known as holes. And what you get across the two sides here is a potential difference. And this is known as the Hall voltage. However, this Hall voltage is minute. It's very, very small. It's like microvolts or something like that. So normally you have to put that through uh, some sort of amplifier, an op amp or something like that to make it sort of readable and usable. So that is why uh, if you put a strong magnet near one of these things, it can rack them. Similarly, resistance checking as well can rack them because they have a polarity. So let me see if we can get that into focus. We saw it there when it was on the car, the uh, plus sign on it there. So if you resistance check that, you know, if you put the leads on in one orientation, you'll probably see an open circuit. And if you swap them around the other way, you'll get some sort of resistance. And that's because, you know, you're actually testing the semiconductor. And anyway, let's move on. Magnetoresistive sensors. Now these are common, basically the norm in modern cars. Cars with hill holder, cars with uh, traction control, ESP, all that sort of jazz, probably use these because they're, they're very, very accurate indeed. Those VRS sensors, they basically at slow speeds, they didn't work at all. So what's happening here is a magnet is changing the resistance. So what I have found is that, you know, if you have uh, high temperatures going on at your wheel, like your, your wheel burns feel, there's a lot of friction going on, you know, your brakes are locked up or something, that is uh, affecting the, the resistance because resistance change with temperature. So that's, they're known as that M MRE and, and also that AMR, uh, anti-stropic magneto resistance. So it's known as these two names, but anyway, the resistance changes with the, the magnetism acting on to it. And what some cars are, are doing now, what some manufacturers are doing, is they're putting two of these magneto resistive pickups um, in the same sensor now. They're not, they're not two separate things. and. Uh, that then can tell the direction of the wheel, whether it's going backwards or whether it's going forward. So that's that's used in things like hill holder and all that sort of jazz. Okay, we'll have a look at what's on the bench here. So here's a sensor here, and there's a magnet inside the sensor, same with this one. So we can see that on the magnetic paper, the magnet stick near everything. So we can see that there, there's that magnet in that. So they act on this, uh, a, a, what's, we'll call a, a reluctor ring, you know, a toothed ring there. So that's dead or even that's dead, whatever, you know. So what I've uh, noticed as well, now these, these particular ones uh, on BMWs and Jaggers and stuff like that, rust gets below them and they expand. And then what happens is it actually touches the sensor then and you get friction here at this surface and then you get spurious, uh, spurious outputs and stuff like that. So that's quite common. However, this one has no magnet in it, you know? So nothing's lighting up there. There's no magnet in that at all. And uh, so what that's clearly acting on is the segments in the, uh, in the wheel burn itself. So it's these segments that we're gonna look at in uh, a wee bit of testing here.
that we have set up. So a while ago, and I showed this in the channel before as well, I made this wee board up. And the, the idea of this, there's a wee LED on there. And the idea of this is to test the sensor independent of the car. So you can either test it here in the bench or on the car, but unplugged. So you can test it. So what, what is going on here? This is a 200 ohm resistor. This LED is across that 200, 200 ohm resistor and it's powered by a PP3 9 volt battery. So the way these things work is, and as you saw on the, on the video, I had a, a battery maintainer on the battery, the car battery of that Ford Focus. Now, normally if you don't have a battery maintainer on, it will say about 11 odd volts. It's, it's usually about a volt less than whatever the battery voltage is. So similarly, whenever the, the alternator is running, you know, the battery could be sitting at 14 volts or something like that. So, you know, the voltage input will vary. However, the way these wheel, wheel speed sensors work is not on voltage. It's actually current. And the levels of current are seven milliamps when it is in an off state and 14 milliamps when it's on. So regardless of the, the, the voltage, and clearly if it's below like nine or something like that, you know, there's, there's something wrong with your wire and it's high resistive or whatever. It needs to be about that 11 or whatever uh, for it to get it to work. But uh, I'm using a wee nine volt battery out of convenience for this wee board. And the 200 ohm resistor is there because that then, that level uh, will turn this LED on and off. So what's actually happening is whenever the wheel speed sensor is in its off state. There's about 1.5 volts then across this LED. And whenever then I can turn it on, uh, it's about three volts and that's enough to light that then. So we can see this flickering. So that's, that's the reason for that. And that is on the negative side, by the way, that is, uh, is on the return side, which as far as I'm aware, most of these wheel speed sensors, if not all of them, all actually are measuring the current flow on the negative side. Right, if I have a sensor here that I, that I haven't never used, it's brand new, and uh, probably didn't use it because it's an aftermarket one, but anyway, it's out of a Volkswagen. And using this wee tool here, this is where the polarity comes into play. I need to know the polarity. Now, whenever you do that, that dirty testing that we did on the the AC setting of the voltmeter, polarity doesn't matter, and we'll see that in a wee second, but I need to know the polarity of this. So in this one here, it said it on it, but uh, it doesn't say it in this, but a wee tip that a uh, big map mechanic told me one time was, if you can see this here, it has like an, an arch on it, a dome on it. So what he says is if you imagine an arch going across a viaduct, so that, that arch then, points towards the ground. So here we have an arch and the arch is the ground. So it's, it's just a wee way of remembering that if you're gonna do this type of testing, like, you know. So wrong polarity on these sensors can and probably will rack them. So if you do use breakout leads and you're breaking out between the sensor and the harness, you need to make sure you follow the wire, you know, you don't get them mixed up. Otherwise, you'll be putting 11 volts or 12 volts or whatever it is, you know, in the wrong side. So, okay, we'll get that in the vase. And I'll get a few, uh, a few things connected up here. So there we go, our LED is lit. And if I pass a magnetic tipped screwdriver across it, I can turn it on and off, basically. So this uh, is magnetic, so you need to have a magnet going across it and then we put our our wheel bearing on it with our magnetic ring here and we're going to move it about scoot it about and uh, it's going across the segments so voltmeter on AC and uh, we can see that happening so th this AC it doesn't you know it doesn't tell you what's going on really, you know, that's 
these things, as I said earlier on, don't, they don't work in voltage anyway, you know, it works in current. But uh, let's see. So we can get that going. So I'll just show on this meter what's happening only with current. Oh, yeah, I said there that polarity doesn't matter if you're doing that AC testing on your voltmeter. So, sure, well. Proof of the pudding's in the eating, all right, not the same. So, there you go. So all you're, all you're seeing is a, a change in your voltmeter, you know. Now, before the comments light up and they go, oh, what if you have a, you know, a segment missing in the ring and all, that's not gonna show, it's not gonna show that. All you're, all you're, this testing is just purely to see if you have an output of this ABS wheel speed sensor. If there's an output at all, you know, so right away on the on the Ford Focus, we saw there was nothing. There was zero. So you know, you, you didn't need to get the scope out and you know or anything like that. But that's that's basically it. And this one here, you know, is uh, the Volkswagen one here is looking at a magnetic ring in in real life on the wheel burn. There's uh, there's no magnet in that. Right, so there we go. We have milliamps here. So that is showing seven milliamps. There's basically zero on the AC meter here, on the AC voltage, and our light is off. So if we turn it on, just do that, there we go. So we have 14. So what was really happening is your individual segments, I'll just get my magnetic paper. So your individual segments there, whenever it passes a magnetic segment, it goes to 14 milliamps. And then whenever there is no segment, it goes to seven. So some people will call that, you know, a high and a low, or it goes high and it goes low or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So this seven and 14 milliamps is regardless of the input voltage, whether the input voltage is 11 volts, 12 volts, 13 volts, 14 volts, it will always be seven and 14, seven for off and 14 whenever it sees, you know, the magnetic segment in the, in the wheel burn in the, in the ring here, you know? So it's on with the light on, off is seven. And uh, let's see, that's really the way it works. So. It doesn't work with voltage at all. You know, the guys that do the scoping, you know, they're seeing this voltage fluctuation in a digital sort of square type wave. And they're saying, oh, that has to be a Hall effect sensor because it is uh, producing a Hall-like pattern. But it mightn't uh, necessarily be that. So our e-voltmeter can't keep up there. So seven and 14 for on and off. So I have a couple of other sensors here we'll maybe test them. There's a BMW one here, and this is, uh, this is typical of, you know, this carry on with a, with a ring is rubbing on the end of it, you know? So let me see. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, a, a BMW one. And I've marked a minus sign on it, so I know the polarity of it. For doing this wee bit of testing here. So, BMW sensor in the vase, and this one has the magnet inside it. So currently, our wee LED is off. We're in our off state, which is seven milliamps. So, if I turn it on here, we can see there's changed to 14. Turn it off, seven. So exactly the same. And uh, it looks at this thing here. So we'll give it a bit of a bar And the wee voltmeter can't get up, but you know, it's going from seven to 14. There we go. Seven or 14, not seven to 14. So it's either seven or 14. So you, you see guys, uh, you know, doing the scoping on the YouTube or wherever it is, you know, 
I see other guys doing it in real life too. And you know, they end up AC coupling their scope. So what they're doing with their scope is basically what we're doing here with this voltmeter. And they're looking at the voltage change without the DC component on it. So that's what this voltmeter's doing. So that's why I'm saying, you know, you can just connect it up with a uh, voltmeter on volt AC or MS. But what is actually happening is the ABS module is monitoring the current. All, usually, now I'm not sure why it's all, I can't say all of them, but usually on the negative, so the, sort of like the return signal if you want, is also the, the signal wire. And it's seven or 14, depending on where the ring is or where it is in the, in the wheel burn. So even though this has a magnet on it, so we'll be able to get change here as well. You know, so anyway, we bit of insight, just how it works, how it really works. The guys that are doing the scoping, they're, they're not wrong in what they're saying and what they're doing, but that's how it really works. And just for my own interest, rather than anything else, and maybe a bit more clarification in case uh, it creates any more sort of questions, I said earlier on that no matter what the voltage is, so say it's 11 volts, 12 volts, 13, 14, whatever it is, we were seeing what, 12.5? Because I had the battery maintainer on. Normally you'd see 11 and a bit, maybe, you know. When the car's running, alternator, 14. So therefore, you would maybe see 13 at the ABS sensor. The reason for the voltage difference is the, the voltage isn't coming directly from the battery. It's coming, it's coming out of the, you know, the ABS computer, the ABS module. So I said that the voltage, even though it changes, the uh, current doesn't, doesn't change, so it's seven or 14 milliamps. And you go to yourself, and I said to myself as well, hmm, well surely voltage is directly proportional to current. Ohm's law, so you're defining the Ohm's law there, are you not? Well, that's true, very much so, however, it's just too small. Anyway, uh, so consider if R was a constant. So R doesn't change, so that's a constant. So we'll rule that out. So if you bring the voltage up, current then should go up. So voltage inc increase gives you an increase in current if resistance is a C constant. It says the same. So I decided to get my power supply in and uh, See if that's true. So anywho, we're sitting at 14.22 there with nine volts there, you know? So let's see now. Well, tell you what we'll do, we'll turn it off and we'll just, I'll just show you another thing with the magnet here, another thing I've noticed. So seven milliamps at nine volts here. So we'll scoot it, it up. And yes, it does go up. But it's still seven milliamps, you know. There's 15 volts. Get into that. So we'll scoot it back to the wee bit. And we'll just do the 14. So 14.33 at 13 and a half volts, which would probably would normally what it would be with the engine run, the alternator run, you know? So we'll scoot that down. And uh, still 14 milliamps. And another wee thing that I said was, you know, there's gaps in this, uh, segmented ring but th this paper actually shows the north and the south pole so there's north and south pole here so you know the gaps are, are the, the south or the north or whatever it is you know so you can't actually see the gaps as such you know it's a magnetic gap if that makes sense so we can sort of reproduce that i think this here is a, a strong magnet and uh, just by turning it you know north and south 
in the proximity of this, we'll see, uh, we'll see if we can replicate that. Just keeping that magnet well away from that sensor because uh, that isn't, isn't good for them at all. So just while we have this out here, we'll just do one last wee experiment. So this is our Ford field sensor. So this is the one that, you know, we couldn't see any change on the voltmeter. And uh, well, we've nothing here at the minute uh, going into it. So just for a giggle, let's see what is going on here with this. Is there any output or is it just dead or what's a crack? So let's have a wee look here. We'll raise the voltage up and we're getting a few milliamps over here, 2.2 .2 at, there's four volts. Two point five milliamps at say six volts. I'm gonna just do a fine adjustment here now. 6.2, 6.3, 6.5, volts. And there's 6.8, it goes to 7.4 milliamps. So there's our seven milliamps. So I've noticed with, you know, different makes of sensors, seven point something milliamps, some are a wee bit, some point, 7.3 maybe, some are seven dead, whatever. And again, obviously, uh, with the voltage changing, that gets a bit higher. So this this is a, a dead sensor. So you know I don't know why our, <laughs> I don't know why this is uh, this is correct. So this component we're testing is known bad. So let's let's bring that down again. Six point two, six point five, six, seven, six. Right, so we're getting something happening in around that 6.8. 7.5, in around a 12. All right then, so in around seven volts then, you know, these, seems, these, these things seem to work. Uh, so that's all you need really. So our wee magnet, We'll turn it around, no change. So, yeah, it's just stuck low and not going high, just joining a few together there. Make a magnet a bit stronger. Note, so there we go. So yeah, now, you know, in this case, no scope required. You know, again, you can do this. Uh, the milliamps thing, that's the way it really works. But do you really need to read the milliamps for testing these active digital, whatever you want to call them, sensors? Well, no. Voltage, just, just use the, the AC RMS. Has to be an RMS voltmeter, by the way. I might do a video sometime and show them uh, why that's important, the RMS thing on a voltmeter. Some voltmeters aren't RMS, are averaging voltmeters. And for automotive, basically useless. I'm going to do a video on that sometime. Anyway, waffle off and on off. We'll go back to the car, make sure that uh, the new sensor is working and the diagnosis is correct and, and all that. Well, here, I'm, right, before I do that, just one other wee thing. Uh, in case you think, there's something funny going on here because I have this wee board in circuit here to get this seven milliamps carry on. I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll take that out of circuit completely. So we'll do away with that. Put that onto there. Let's see here, I'll just connect that onto there for convenience. So 
no 200 ohm resistor on our little board in that. It's magnet sticky everything. So what we'll maybe do is uh, we'll put the, a good a good one on here. And no one get so no two hundred ohm resistor in circuit at all. There we go. Right now, let's see our new uh, part is fitted. Let's see if we can get that in there without uh, glaring there. So we've just checked it there. Left rear. We're now getting an output so all it was was a sensor so yeah you could have said uh, you could have just you could have just fired the parts kind of that and hope for the best you know and the sensor on it and yeah this time you had fixed it but that doesn't happen all the time so the, the point of this video is uh just to give you a wee bit of testing you know quick tests and you can you can do that there i would have showed with an ordinary voltmeter just uh these hall effect sensors Stick it on AC and you'll see something happening if it's functioning correctly. And then, you know, you can prove everything else, you know, your wiring to your module, the module itself and all that there, you know, by using the known good on the other side with a couple of bits of wire. So anybody can do that. And that's, that's sort of what I'm trying to get across in this video. So anyway, that's really about it for this one. Thanks for watching and all the best and